Hello folks, and let's take a look here. Uh, Camtasia 2023 recently dropped, and I have some things I want to talk about it. Uh, first off, I've been a Camtasia user for a very long time, I'm talking over a decade. Uh, I've had good experiences with it, I've had some bad experiences, and the bad experiences are usually because of a bad computer. I'm here on my new computer that I recently built. It's rocking and rolling, has everything going, and the camera I'm shooting is the Insta360 Link, uh, which somewhere up there I'll have a video if you want to take a look at that. But let's take a look here at our differences and see if Camtasia 2023 is worth the upgrade. Uh, first off, we have background removal, which we'll get into in just a little bit. We have canvas rulers, which I'm not sure why that's there because I had that on the Camtasia Mac version last time out, and I'm pretty sure it was on the 2022 version of the Windows version as well. I'm running on a Windows computer right now, by the way. We have the vignetting effect, not a big seller uh, for me. Corner pinning is pretty cool. Uh, I'll go over that in just a little bit as well. Dynamic backgrounds, cool, but uh, kind of existed before. Uh, we have Camtasia filters uh, and enhanced image and animation controls, which are really cool. Uh, we can replace the cursor, neon cursor pack, and that's about it. So out of all these little check boxes going on here, some of them are really good. Some of them, eh, they're okay, I guess. Uh, like this vignetting effect doesn't do much for me, uh, but doing corner pinning is super cool. So let's jump in and take a look at this. So I was recently in an accident. This is a video from my car that recorded uh, what happened. Uh, it's rainy, it's not high quality video at any means. Uh, if we take a look here at the project settings itself, it's only uh, 1280 by 960. So again, not super high quality by any means, but it's gonna be enough to give us a little showcase of what's going on. Uh, so if we go over here and take a look at our library here, the library has been updated. And if you wanna bring in assets from previous versions, you can do that. You just need to export them and then bring them over. Uh, but there's some new stuff in here, uh, but it, the big one they advertised was dynamic backgrounds. So if we go in here and put in dynamic backgrounds, uh, we can see that uh, it's basically pre-applied videos that you can go through and they loop through forever, which is always fun. Uh, there's tons of these things in there. Uh, some of them are really cool. Some of them, not so much. Uh, but even like the sunburst one where it's just spinning. And what's cool about this is over here in our properties, we can change the color. So if it's built on a system that we can uh, do things with, uh, we can actually go through and edit all of this stuff dynamically and just make it fit whatever our potential area is here. Uh, so dynamic backgrounds, big win. Uh, I'm very excited about it, uh, especially just because it gives you a little bit of options uh, and allows you to customize things really, really nicely. Uh, with that said also, um, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later, but you can download some additional assets for free, which are fantastic. Uh, and I have a whole bunch here that I've downloaded and gone through. Uh, but if we take a look here in downloads, uh, like this little end slide or this beginning slide where you can kind of come in, it's pretty slick. You'd have the points come in here. You have your stuff there. You can change the color and paint all the text over here, which is something they introduced in the last couple versions. Um, there's some really slick stuff that's available totally for free inside of here. Uh, but that's really the main thing as far as libraries go. Uh, again, in the Camtasia 2023, there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of it is similar to what was there before, and a lot of it is pretty new. Uh, so there's some cool stuff that's going on in there. One of the other quick updates I had was enabling the ruler. So all you have to do is go up to view and then you hit show canvas ruler or control shift R. It'll pop on there and then it allows you to drag in little spots and you can snap to those spots. Really handy uh, depending on what you're doing. And if you want to get rid of them, you can just kind of grab them here and throw them off to the side of the screen and they work beautifully. Um, when you're trying to make sure things are consistently placed and then set, uh, it's a really, really easy option that doesn't do too much and it's pretty easy to do. We also happen to get a whole bunch of video stuff going on here. So let's go over and take a look at that. Uh, we're gonna go into visual effects. Uh, we have our background removal, which we're gonna go over in just a little bit. I'll have a test video that was shot right where I'm at now and I'll show you what it does, if it works and how well it works. Uh, but let's talk about some of the other things we have here. If we scroll through here, there's a lot of stuff that's pretty much the same as what we have before. We have a new motion path, which allows us to take a single object and have a path for it to follow. So it's getting closer to kind of animation style stuff. It's pretty cool, um, very easy to use. Uh, and I'm not gonna go over it in this video, mainly because it's what it says it is. You pick the path and it moves along that path in the ways that you want it to be. Uh, the other one here is vignette, and I'm just gonna drag it on here, and you can see that it adds this little vignetting here, and we can change the amount of vignetting, uh, the size of it we can adjust, and all of that. Uh, 
Again, nothing too crazy, nothing too big of a deal. Uh, uh, nice to have, but not nothing that really adds tons of value, in my opinion, to this release of Camtasia. We have new cursor replacements. Now, I'm not going to go through that right now just because this is not a screen recorded video that I'm working on right now. Uh, but I'm going to jump back to it when I'm showing you me editing this. And you can see that I'll be able to go through and add different cursors than what was originally on my mouse here, which is just a white mouse. I can change it like now and it will be something different, which is kind of cool. So it occurred to me I didn't really show how this went. So I'm going to edit real fast and show you what's going on. By clicking on the media, you have the mouse button here. And inside of that, we have Mac cursor. So even though I'm on a Windows computer, I can make it look like a Mac. Uh, we have Windows cursors, hand-drawn, custom, neon. So if I wanted that to be a neon arrow or a rocket ship, I can do that. Uh, there's a Camtasia one and there's all kinds of stuff. I don't know what I would use these for, but they're there. They're fun and I can do them for all kinds of different stuff. So just know that they're there underneath the cursor. You can just drop down, figure out what you want. And then if you want to, you can change the scale, opacity, and edit the cursor path and do whatever it is you need to do with your cursor. Back to the video. And let's really focus here on the replace background. This is kind of be one that uh, a lot of people I think are going to use for a lot of different things. And you kind of just need to make sure your area is set up right now. If you take a look behind me, I'm in a basement that is a mess right now. Uh, my dog was sleeping on the futon there. I have stuff that I need to put away. Uh, I was just cleaning up and just need to make a video. So let's see how it works in this environment and see what happens when we're doing that. All right, so as we mentioned that we can remove our background here. Uh, I have stuff behind me. I'm not well lit. This is not the, uh, the experience that I'd like to have with this, but this is kind of a, uh, a bad condition. There's no natural light here. Uh, all of the lighting is coming from above me or on my computer screen here. Um, they're mixed lights. There's not a lot going on. That's good. And there's also not a lot of depth because the walls and the carpet are close to the same color. And there's a lot of just stuff all over my basement. So let's go ahead and drop this out and see what happens. So we can also go in and do some pinning. And basically what that does is allows us to go through and change the corner so that we can fit it onto a device for display if it's not square with our item. Uh, to do this, all you have to do is go up here to the top where it has this little uh, corner pin mode. It will allow us to select these corners and we can then have this thing automatically manipulate to where we want. So we get some cool effects here. Like if you want to do like a Star Wars opening scene, there you go. All you have to do is put these pins farther back uh, you can drag them around and you can very easily get that opening credit scene. If you just put text in there, you can have it run through, do its thing. Uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, not something I'm going to use a lot of, but it's a nice to have. And one final note here is they've changed the export engine just a little bit. When you go into file and export, so I can local file export here, I have all of that set up. I have my encoding right now and I have it set to 80% because I want to use my GPU, GPU excuse me, because it's better than the computer is for that stuff. Uh, it's still in beta, uh, but it does export things very nicely. One thing I've noticed though is in Camtasia 2023, I went through and took the same video file that was made before 2023 came out and I put it into Camtasia 2022. I put on the LUTs and effects and then I put on some custom stuff that's uh, just basically trying to stress it out a little bit. It was a five minute and 27 second video. It exported in just over 57 seconds. I did the exact same clip, the exact same settings, all that stuff, and it ex exported in 57 seconds. So the time that it's going through is not there, but I got a significantly smaller file size. We're talking almost 90 megabytes down to 75. So that's that's a pretty decent difference in size for things. And speaking of visual effects here, um, in our visual effects area, we have a new spot called filters. When we go over to filters, we can put all these different mats in here that will are preset LUTs essentially for us. Previously in our last version, we did have LUTs available to us, but we only had one. And if we want to do anything else with them, we have to download our own LUTs and it could get a little messy. Now they've introduced a whole bunch of these here for us that we can just go in and drag on. So if I wanted this to be black and white, I can drag it on to my item and now immediately it's black and white. I can adjust the intensity of it. I could also say what ranges I want that to apply to, which opens up a whole bunch of different possibilities. I can also just, I don't have to drag these over. I can just go from here and see exactly what it is. So if I wanted to uh, go to uh, golden hour, 
make it look like it was a little sunnier than the rainy day that my accident was, I can do that without any problems. Uh, so this one's pretty cool. Um, it's nice that we have one, a visual version of what these are and what they might look like, uh, but also uh, just having some preset. There's roughly 30 of them. Having those in there already is a huge help. And then also just being able to see them before you add them on, another huge help. You can still add more, but this is an easy, quick way to do it. So that's kind of all my ins and outs of Camtasia 2023. I'm sorry it's a little scattered there, but I'm a little excited about this one. I also think that this is a pretty solid release overall. And uh, if I were going to upgrade brand new, like having to pay the hundred and whatever dollars it is to upgrade the whole thing, I'm not sure I'd go with this one because the old one, 2022, can do most of what this can. And uh, there's a few nice to has, but nothing that's crazy there. Uh, but if you're on the maintenance one, obviously grab this. And uh, one other thing I want to note is that usually I wait for a couple of updates to Camtasia before I start switching over my files and production workflow. I haven't done that this time. Camtasia 2023 has been rock solid for me. I haven't had to do in crashing. I haven't had any problems with exports. I haven't had any problems with freezing. There's been no real issues. So I'm really happy with this one and uh, I hope that you will be too. So let me know what you think of Camtasia 2023 and I will talk to you later.